Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 106. Halfway through the year, or is it July that's halfway through the year? I never remember. We're in June. It's hot here, which is unusual, but that's okay. Um, hope everybody's having a good time. The summer, summer break, starting, things like that. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to join us right here, right now. Let's do the agenda. Wix 3103 did not ship last week. I'm sure everybody saw that. We found another bug. I'll talk about that in a minute because Sean's not here. He's off on vacation. So I guess I'll talk about 3103. Um, we'll do the usual triage and talk about a pull request and then uh, anything else that's burning on people's minds. So let's talk about 3103 again. Um, there is a late failure found when the bundles were run embedded and GDI Plus was used. Uh, missed the test case. Sean did the additional fix necessary, uh, did extra testing on it last night. Things look fine. And so we'll do a 3.10.3 build today. Um, also found while doing the testing that the Uber replace all the .NET headers, um, uh, the outer curve headers with .NET foundation headers um, snuck into the uh, templates, which is not what we want, because that would basically say that the templates are what you build with templates has to be released under MSRL, which is definitely not our intent. Um, so have a fix for that as well that's already been merged in. Thank you, Bob. Um, so I think we'll be all queued up for a build today. And um, Sean threw out the July 4th date. Sounds good, I think, um, since that will give us about four weeks to have this sit and have anybody find any last things that we have to. Um, that also, I think, will be better because we won't be pushing the release. Like, we kind of were trying to slip it in, thinking that everything was cool, last minute, and, of course, that hardly ever, if ever, works out. So let's we'll have the build out today, and that'll give us about four weeks minus a day and we'll just let it hang out there. Um, I will probably go out and write a blog post about 3.10.3s, you know, hopefully find a release candidate, maybe drum up a little more interest on it, and um, then we'll declare, uh, hopefully, victory. And hopefully, we will remove 3.10.3 from the agenda in July, but we'll leave it, I think, probably in June. Not that we might be talking about it on the 21st or not. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's move forward with the world of Wix toolset. Triage. So I was looking through the bugs, and, you know, we have 12 open and 8 are closed, so it's going to be 20 to walk through, but 12 open seems to be fairly typical for us, around 10-ish um, every two weeks, and this has actually been three weeks because we weeks, yeah. skipped yeah, last week. Hard. So this actually still feels pretty good. I'm still evaluating in my mind the idea of, hey, are we doing okay every two weeks? And still it feels like things are going all right. Um, all right, so let's go to the bottom. This issue, please try with 3.10.3RC. This was the previous build. We'll get another build out, but probably we think uh, this is fixed. Should we leave it open for another two weeks and then bounce it again? I was kind of oh. hoping we might get a response. Yeah. So why no. don't we why don't we poke him again? Okay. And just say, hey, how about we poke him after the build comes out? After the build, yeah. And say, hey, so we found one last bug. You really need to test this and see if it fixed it. I All can right. do that. All right. Three, three, eight. Okay, three, eight. Exit codes. When installing this, burn mapping is not used, and we get a restart required. Oh, okay. So the process returned an H result. I assume that's that's thirty ten, right? In H result form. Yeah. Did we do that, or is burn changing that, or? Is that just an error code that can't come from .NET Framework 451 now? Uh, I'm not aware of any changes. They're, they're, they were still returning 3010-ish. Um, um, 
Right. So does it just mean that in the exit code you have to include the big negative number to represent this H result as well as a force reboot? Yeah, I see. I want to. Last time I checked, burn handled both cases. Handled those cases? Specifically handled. Uh, well, mm, so that's interesting. I'm wondering if if um, if it's a problem because they're trying to change. They're using the exit code uh, attribute or element to to change the behavior. So I think when burn does its default in interpretation of mm -hmm. the exit code, it handles the Win32 and the H result. Got it. So it would treat both of those as success, restart required. And yeah, Phil points out the package returns zero because burn is doing that interpretation. So it's saying, it's okay, it's a success, and it's one of those special success cases that we know about. Um, but maybe when you're doing exacode, um, that doesn't happen. And so he did send a pull request um, here to change it such that Burn would check both the uh, H result version and the non H result version for all air exit codes that you put in there. Okay. And I was like, no, 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 you can't do that. So um, you can't have all exit codes be checked for both H result and non H result result. But someone's going to end up hitting a case where they're like, I need to treat these two separately. And then right, with an right. exit code that, plus it, you can't do it in three, which is where he made the change because that would potentially break people getting a surprising yeah. new behavior. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't think we want it. If, if, you're, if you're managing the exit codes yourself... Then you have to list all the numbers. Then I think, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want us to, to make those kinds of assumptions in yeah, the I, engine. I don't think we can. I think it's really bad. It's like, you know, you're going to put exit code 1, 2, 3, potentially, and you don't want the high, you know, whatever those are in the H result numbers mm -hmm. coming along. They'll just be weird. Well, plus, you know, I mean, you'd have to assume that they're, they're you know, the Win32 exactly. age results. Exactly. And that's not, not safe. No. All right, so we're definitely not taking that. And the answer is, if you want to map exit codes, you need to put them all in here. Now, there was a bug at some point somewhere that... Um, you couldn't put large negative numbers in the exit code. It, it was 31-bit. It was yeah. signed. Yes, I think that's been fixed. Okay, all right. Because I remember that bug too, and I was going, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we fixed that because otherwise you couldn't handle these big, you know, numbers. Now it might be cool if we could handle um, uh, hex, but you know, I, that'd be a binder side or a compiler side thing. Going, oh, look, it looks like a hex number. Let's turn it into a big negative number for you. But that's a different feature. Yeah. Not this one. All right, cool. Carrying on, splash screen appears too late. This is very unfortunate. This is side effects of the untrusted mode, plus some other things that I always, I never really cared for the way we were loading the manifest before we were looking, loading the splash screen. So essentially what happens is there's a set of processing that happens before the splash screen is displayed. Um, and that's, that set of processing has gotten longer because we do it twice now because of the untrusted in the clean room. Um, and um, it was always probably too long, and now it's really too long. Um, and so this is a thing that we should fix and burn. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to do it. It's not going to be simple, but we should we should fix it. So I don't know where we'll, we'll put it in 3x, assuming it could be fixed there, and go from there. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Not going to be a fun one to try to fix, though, to thread all the way through. Well, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I objected. I, I suggested we not take this bug in three ten three. Um, it's but scary. It seems to me that it, it we can short circuit some of the manifest processing. That's my hope. But yeah, so it's going to take a lot more rejiggering, and I don't want to try to do that in three ten three. Absolutely not. All right. Um, this is the fix. Um, this was fixed a while ago, so we just didn't clean this bug. All right, cool. So this could be tagged, burn, and put in milestone 3.10.3 and carry on. Because this is all in. Done. Look at that. 
can even see it happening when I'm staring at it. Extra arguments. This is another fix that Sean found that by fixing the previous one. So let's. I think we'll do the same thing. Burn in 3.10.3 and then we'll be off with that one. This is weird. Scrolling keeps ending up in the wrong place. Unable to build Wix after upgrade to 3.10.2. Um, project, this is... 3.10.2 does not reproduce for me. All right, well, uh, no repro, I guess? I don't know where we stick this one. That works. Intermediate build. Good that we fixed it somewhere. None of the three zips because of this. This is fixed in a future build because it actually tells you not to use that, but it must be in 3.11. I think it's 3.11, yeah. Yeah, all right. Cool. So this can be closed and tools, and one day we won't get those bugs anymore when people are on 3.11. Actually, that would be awesome. One day when we get another, because we're certainly going to get another one of these when people try to get an old version of Wix tool set from the zip file, we'll be like, cool, upgrade to 3.11. <laughs> <laughs> it's fixed in 3.11. Then they'll get there and be like, oh. Uh, warn against using service config as service. Oh, yes, I remember Bob pointing this out to me. Um, the documentation on the Windows, um, it, on MSDN says, this functionality is not working as expected and basically says, don't use it. <laughs> Actually, it tells you to go use a really horrible custom action with no yes, or anything like that, which is just terrifyingly bad. Um, but we should update the Wix tool set to warn against this. Think we could drop this in 3.11? Yeah, absolutely. In yeah, fact, right. I'll take it. I want right. to do it. All right, cool. Let's I, drop it 3.11. I, I find that so amusing that I just really want to do it. Yeah. Hey, we need to add a warning to the Wix tool set because Windows installer is broken. This is kind of scary that we got these flipped. The system folder and system64 folders are reversed. Is that really true? I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't show the log file I, from the results. Yeah. The code looks right. But then again, they're so badly named that it might just be that they look right to me because yeah, it's, it's the problem of a double negative. It's like if you have three double negatives or a triple negative, I suppose you could call it, um, does that mean that you're back to a single negative? All right, well, we should look at this. Let's drop this in 3.11, and and I will, I guess I'll take a look at it, because this, this is bad. We should sort this out. Although, if it's actually bad, then we can't necessarily take it in 3.11. I don't know. Oh. But I agree we should at least research it. Yeah, all right. We may have to push the 4. Built in. Custom burn application throws this when .NET is uninstalling. This is the question. No. Oh yes, this is the. Yeah, this is the fix. All right, so this, this was the this was the fix that reset three ten three, um, and Sean did a fix and looks like it all fixed it. So yay. Um, all right. Interesting. So Phil's bringing up that System64 is not documented as a burn variable. Correct. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a set of things we should look at. Uh, Phil, can you add that comment to that um, bug and make sure that we look at that as well? Figure out what are we really trying to do there? Thanks. Um, add possibility of launching elevated engine process. You know, it's kind of fun to watch someone in a bug work their way through back to the exact design that we have now. This is the rubber duck example. Yes, like, but you actually get to watch them do this all in the span of like three days. So, yep. So, no, we're not launching the burn engine elevated. Pfft, you don't do that. It's not how it works. All right, Doc explaining how to install .NET Framework has misleading detail. Yeah, I'll take this one. Oh, this is the... Yeah, web versus payload. Yes. Yep. Cool. Redis is better for surprising reasons. Um, or not surprising reasons. Surprisingly, web is better. Or uh, Redis is... Ah, I don't know. Messed that all up. All right. Wix libs built by...
by a lit for multiple weeks slips is invalid. Right. So to actually merge the source sections and the targets and tables into the target rather than just appending them. That doesn't make sense. They shouldn't merge fragments. They just merge the outer library. Right. So my comment is a Wixlib is a bunch of sections and a Wixlib built from Wixlibs is still a bunch of sections. Yeah, so I, I don't I, there's something else going on here. That's not yeah, nice. that's for me this was no repro. Um, all right, let's let's resolve this scenario because this is chances works fine. I manually Although there's this weird thing of adjusting the wixlibs so that all the rows from the second are moved to the first. Wait, oh, if I manually adjust the wixlibs such that all the rows are moved. Oh, so if you merge two fragments, then that works fine. Well, yeah, if you merge the content of two fragments into one fragment, then that's going to be a different behavior than merging two wixlibs together. Okay, yeah, so this guy has manually modified. Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> I think they expect the wixlib to squash sections, which it does not do. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what the behavior doesn't make sense to me. The complaint is, as is, it doesn't find something in the resulting Wixlib, which... Which would make sense, because if you don't reference something in that fragment, it doesn't get included, right? So he's basically saying, look, it effectively becomes this, which is exactly true. That's exactly what merging Wixlib yeah. does, combine yep. sections into a single library, so you could ship fewer libraries on the command line. It does not squish sections together, because that's just crazy. There's nothing in the Wix toolset that squishes sections together. No. So the the fundamental understanding of how Wix uh, webs work is false. So not an issue. <laughs> um, that works. Or by design, whichever way you want to go with that. I don't really have a by design, I don't think. Um, application shortcuts added. Yeah, this is a dupe of that, and I still don't know what's causing that exactly. Why it works in some and not in others, and it, it all depends on the icon. Yeah. The actual ICO file. Really? That's so weird. Well, if, right. if, if if the icon goes into the the installer cache, mm -hmm. it's compressed and gets the arrows. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because right. that's that's a change somewhere in some oh, somewhere in Windows they did that. Yeah, and, the, and, and not the icon, icon cache first. That's really bad. Cause that's where you're supposed to put them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh man. All right. System cannot find the file. Oh, this is the guy on Wine. Yeah. Uh, don't know. He's going to have to go investigate that. Yeah, we don't really support Wine, so let's just resolve this as. We don't really support wine. If he wants to send a fix that makes it work online, we investigate. We entertain it. Okay. But we're not going to test online. It's just a whole other world of weirdness. Error event not called anymore. Just upgraded from 3.7 to 3.10, and now error handlers are not called when exit package turns an exit code. I went digging through a little bit, and I'm just not, it's not clear to me that where on error is, is triggered. The, you know, execute package complete obviously gets called. It just wasn't clear to me that on error was also called in that event, or in that case. That error code <laughs> says it's error full screen mode. Interesting. Um, yeah. Which is 1007. Um, we need log file. This is a help question. Let's send them to, to the mailing list and try to figure out what they're doing, and then if there's a bug, we'll do that. So have them go and have a conversation about what they've done. Because nothing about there should change. Unless we're doing okay. each results on 
return codes, but we're not doing that because the other guy hit the case right. where we're trying to. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So we can go back and forth for what's going on there. VS crashes when I create a new setup project. Um, not us. Turns out it was not due to Wix, but my other extensions are blocking it. Wow. Why do they pick us? To, why do they blame us? Just because that's what they clicked on last. Well, plus it was experimenting with other installation tools. So, so did the ours was the easiest one to open a bug against? Apparently. All right. Dialogue descriptions should end with a period. Okay. Maybe I, I, I took a peek. There are, yeah. So the general rule is, if you have a sentence, then yes, it should end in a period. Um, spot checking. Yeah, probably most of the ones that he points out should have one. Okay, so three maybe. Um, yeah. Unless you, I mean, you sound thrilled to do it, but. Well, no, it's no. it's a okay. it's a style question. It's a style question. All right. Um, they're they're titles. All of these. All these the description them. strings, they're in the they're they're in the. Some of them have it, and some of them don't. And that's kind of weird. It, yes. I would, <laughs> they should be consistent. I yes. agree with that. Yes. All right. Uh, 3X. Someone could fix that. It's an easy one to fix. Memory test verifies incorrect variable. Yeah, that looks wrong. I looked at this. I was like, what? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the wrong one. Copy paste mistakes. Mm hmm. Has the right comment was fixed. Actual variable checked is not. Usually so, the other way around. Indeed. Uh, let's drop this in 3.11, and I will take it if nobody else wants to, because that's straightforward and should be fixed. This next one's interesting. Um, they didn't fill in any of this stuff. No, they're there, just on the right edge. On the right edge? Oh, on the I see. Oh, okay. Keep reading past the question mark. All right. Um, so he has a bunch of numeric variables, things like that. And then he's doing a contains. Contains only strings, numeric, only numeric. And so when he does a contains for a string variable, it returns true, but re <laughs> actually requesting it, it does not exist? Well, no. It's... It Fails to coerce. That the problem is. Oh, it's trying to coerce. He's expecting, he's expecting that the you know the typed variables are you know I don't know doing more work than they're currently doing. Yeah, the type doesn't isn't. I don't know if it's. A, I guess it's persisted down, but. Um, it's, well, it's one of those things that was added to the to the managed BA side, but you know. Uh, you can, I, I'm not arguing the behavior he's expecting is wrong. It's just, it's just, it doesn't do it. That's not what it does today. Yeah, it's not changing 3x, so we could chop it in 4x, and someone could try to write a whip up about it um, if we want to fix it. I don't really like the way that whole collection is handled in general. Yeah, it's a little weird. It is not weird. great. It's 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 done. It's a, it's showing the interop underneath through too yeah. much. Yeah, and I think it should do a better job than that. But, or well, or it should do none of it. This is this is one where it's it's in between, so you know it's hiding some of the, yeah. the implementation, um, but not but enough. Not enough. Yeah. Yep. So we could toss this a four X, and if someone wants to write up a whole whip about how they want this to work, then we could do that. All right, cool. So I'm not going to flip back to the PowerPoint slide deck to move to the pull request because whenever I do that, um, I lose my mouse cursor. So we're going to see if I can keep my mouse cursor by just continuing on to our pull request of the day. Um, add inheritable permissions, EX, yada, yada, yada. So this has been a feature request for a long time, and um, Lord Jeb has come out and done it, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I actually hit... I actually reviewed this a while ago one evening and left a bunch of requests or on the Wix 3. Um, 
one and then need them in four. This is a change to the schema, or has a change in the schema we'll see, which means I don't think it can go in three because of patching, um, although we could put it into a you know 311 if we wanted to. Um, but I want to talk about the four one here and we can talk about the three one elsewhere. So the change, the change is to um, add an attributes column, which is what I asked. He actually added an ignorable column. And instead, what we do generally with these bit flag type things is add an attributes column and then start filling it up with attributes. Had we done that this. Way, patching isn't broken. Exactly. Had we, we done this add bits. before, <laughs> we would have been yeah. able to add the bit and not break patching. But we didn't. So now we're getting it right in four. Yay. Um, there's an enum for the number, attributes. This is very common parsing of in the compiler. It's a Boolean with the yes, no type. Add the attribute if it's yes. I'm not really big on is inheritable. I don't know if we do that in Wix, but mm, I'm not going to quibble too much over that name. Local don't time, local use variable. Apps. No, I, but wouldn't it just be inheritable <laughs> without the is? I don't know. I like the is and has. Yeah. And then, so anyway, this is the very typical, hey, look, I'm adding a column. Yeah, the column in the middle, which is fine in four, because you're not going to be up, you know, patching from three to four. Definitely not going to work. Um, otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, I maybe put it at the end, things like that, but that's fine. Um, I think the one issue I hit was I look at the XSD, and this should be a yes, no, right? Because instead of a string, because it's a yes, right. no here. Oh, the yes, no attribute value. And they're right there, read and delete below it. Already has. Yes. Yep. 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 So, all right. It's going to tell me I can't comment. Oh, it did it. All right. Um, and then we get down to the C code, which is always a little bit more interesting. Um, so we are going to cross, oh, we're going to grab the secure objects uh, attributes column, which we just added, add it to our list of enums, so inquiry it. Um, add the enum that matches the manage code side to be number one. Why delete this white space? Everything else has white space. Oh, is it because he's doing, oh, he's doing a read, write, read, write. Okay, maybe he is making these more consistent. This is the read, write together. Here's the read write together. Let's expand this code out a little bit and see if it that makes it okay. That makes it more consistent. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, oh, this should not be down here. Um, in native code, all variables should be declared at the top of the function. May have missed that. Yeah, before. we don't do that all consistently. Mm, we should. We should. Mm, we don't. Okay. Well, this one pr might get away with it, but it really should be declared at the top. See, it's here. It is declared here at the top, but it's also going to be used inside the loop, I suppose. That made it clear. But anyway. So what do we do? We read the, the number out of the table in the immediate mode custom action. We add it to the custom action data, and then the custom action data on the is shredded on the um, deferred custom action. Basically, the immediate mode is just shuffling data from tables to deferred actions. Really annoying that when install them, I should do all that work for really no purpose. But All right, so here we get the number of the attributes out because we added it. And then we, oh, we fix the typo in that. And here's the cool part. We actually start fixing things. So if the object is inheritable, just do that. It's interesting. Didn't realize this, that the permissions EX was always doing inherited on create folders. <laughs> so on folder permissions, it was already set in the um, inheritable bit. Now what it's doing is it's looking at the attribute and setting it if you set that. So this is a breaking change for create folder. You have to add this attribute. If you don't, um, you wouldn't get, oh, that's an interesting thing. So if you had a existing code using permissions EX and you upgrade from three to four, and your permission is nested under a create folder, then you need to add the inheritable right. attribute. Yeah. Need to update Wixcop to handle the migration where 
permission ex element needs inher inheritable attribute and it by default when create folder element to match with C three point X behavior. That's a tricky one. All kinds of fun things to think about. All right. And I can go and elaborate on that later. So here he's updated this test, which is cool to add the inheritable, 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 inheritable equals no, just to show doesn't does not work. So overall, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Little things to get it Matching a little bit more. This yes no type is probably the biggest thing, and then we could add Wix cop in another change if we wanted to. Um, a little bit later. All right. That was fun. Nice little feature. Yeah, this will handle registry and files or folders and the things that it does before. Because all it does here, Phil, is it adds this attribute sub containers and objects inherit if the attribute is in, marked as inheritable. Where before it would add this when you were adding permissions EX underneath a folder. Clearly when this is designed, it was just trying to add inherited permissions under folders and didn't think through the whole registry stuff because this attributes and all that is a much better way to go about doing it. So this is the way it should have been done in the first place. So it's great to finally have this feature done properly now. Cool, cool. All right. Carrying on. Yeah, so we did that pull request review. A couple comments. We'll go back and forth. Good things. Nice to see a feature. Other things people want to talk about. We started on time. We're getting close to a half hour. This is actually pretty good, huh? Had a fair number of decent discussion on some issues. Uh, Wix 3.10 will hopefully one day be removed from our agenda, which will give us that much less um, work <laughs> or things to cover during this meeting. I can dream. Um, of course, then we're going to fill it with Wix 3.11 and Wix 4 schedules because we need to be talking about those. Um, anything else? Anything else? So two weeks, uh, June 21st, if I look the calendar correctly, uh, we'll have another meeting. Um, hopefully everything just works um, on 3.10.3 or we're able to flush out whatever issues are early and we'll hopefully talk about that in two weeks and then after that stay on target and release um, July 4th and start talking about the rest of the year. July 4th. That's got to be close to the middle of the year. Which is the middle of the year? End of June. End of June. So yeah, okay. So July 4th is pretty close to the middle of the year. Alright, great. So we'll finally be done with 3.10 after eight months of dragging it out, or what, when did we start this? No, October? When did it first? 3.10? November, right? Was, no, oh, before Oh, original? Yeah, yeah. No, that was... <laughs> that was probably Labor Day. No. September? Horrible. Oh, jeepers. All right, so a nine-month release <laughs> of baby fixes. Um, but that's okay. If you ever wonder why it's hard for to get things done when you have a product in the field, this kind of stuff is why. Mm -hmm. Security security was a bad one, though, especially when it came out of nowhere and in the middle of really hard stuff. So, all right. So, on and on. Anything else? All right. So, two weeks, we'll probably have a meeting that's very similar to this one, and hopefully the meeting after that we'll have, yay, a little party, um, and which is the same thing we said after Memorial Day, which didn't happen, but hopefully it will happen this time. Um, and we'll roll on with 3.11 and, and Wix 4. All right. Well, since you guys aren't very talkative at this point, I'm going to declare this meeting a success. <laughs> Cause it's always nice to start the morning with success. And, um, well, I guess until two weeks, go ahead and we'll get this build out in 3.10.3. Give it a kick. Try it out. Hopefully it fixes everything, that all the issues that everybody's seen. And until next week, take it easy. Bye. Bye.